All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Welcome to the coffee chat. Uh, really excited to have you guys here. And um, I will pass it over to Lauren now. All right. Well, yes, welcome everyone. Our very first LinkedIn live show. Um, today, we're actually going to be talking all about VLabs and, you know, how you can use it to try new technologies or to try out new products or to study for those ever elusive certs and get actual hands on experience and not just, you know, be shamed into getting that paper cert. Right. Um, and we can do all this in a risk free environment. And here we have with us Kieran Milne, the creator of VLabs. Kieran, how are you today? Good. good. Thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. It's Friday and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit more about VLabs. Sure. Well, great kickoff from you there. So Juniper VLabs, uh, it, it was born out of the, the kind of following scenario, right? Uh, I'd like to use Juniper products, right? And I don't have uh, them myself. Uh, maybe I'm a potential customer or uh, I'd like to work on something in a lab environment and test out some some new ideas for my network deployment, but I, I don't want to do it in production and I don't have a great lab set up to do what I want to do. As you mentioned, uh, it's kind of studying, kind of a, a self-development uh, type of tool. All those cases where there's you don't have the equipment and you don't have access to the equipment. And those two things combined were really the genesis of VLabs, right? Providing uh, an easy to access kind of cloud-based, web-based platform that offers a nice variety of Juniper products and solutions in uh, a protected environment, as you said, a uh, safe place you can go and mess around, uh, break things, uh, try new things, and uh, you know, come in when you like and uh, explore around and, and get on the equipment in all the ways that, that people would want to get onto. And it's all there and ready. And uh, the magic word at the end of that all is probably that it's free. <laughs> People like free. I know I would have liked this uh, when I was studying for my certs. Um, so, well, let's dive into it, Kieran. Let's see what it looks like. I think it's pretty easy to. I've I've even logged in and, and been able to use the environment. So, show us what it looks like. Absolutely. I just want to make sure folks can see the screen share there. Yeah, I think we're good to go. So, I'm on the front page, which is vlabs.juniper.net. And when you come here, pretty simple front page. And there's a sign in button, which I will use in just a moment. Um, but there's a video if you want to get a bit more overview uh, after we meet here, of course, about uh, kind of what VLabs is all about. Uh, one thing you do need to get into VLabs per the sign in button is an account. Now, an account is free to get and sign up. If you're uh, lots of folks, customers, partners, you might have a, a Juniper.net type account already. That should work fine. Uh, if you don't, that's fine as well. There are some instructions right down here in the lower part of the page. Uh, take you to another page, and I won't go there at the moment, but uh, to get yourself following through some steps to get signed up with the free account. Either way, once you have your account, you jump on in. Yeah, that's awesome, Karen. And I just want to say to the folks that are watching, um, we appreciate all your hellos. Please keep them coming, but feel free to ask questions as well. Um, we're here. We're live. Dogs are probably going to start barking. My laundry machine's running. Um, so feel free to ask questions, and this is pretty informal. Absolutely. Yeah. My daughter's home from school, and uh, we may find out if she does Netflix more than homework here in a moment with my screen, but I, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> but uh, so what you didn't see what I did there, there when I clicked sign in is you didn't see me type in a username and password. And that's simply because I did so just before we joined on the webinar here. So uh, you will see a, a username password sequence. Either way, once you're logged in, you'll get here on our kind of VLabs internal landing page. And what you can see across the top is a grouping of the uh, well, the groupings of what's available in VLabs kind of categorized into two sections or buckets. The first section is actually a really simple section. It's standalone devices. So I just want to try, uh, I'm new to Juniper and I just want to try getting on the Juno CLI. Well, uh, get on the standalone VMX device. Works great. Totally reasonable option for that kind of single device, single CLI scenario. But so that's not all. People yeah. can see there that uh, we really do use one Juno on most of our devices. Is that right? That's a great point. So that's absolutely true. So that one Juno, the Juno OS carries across everything that's actually showing here. So whether you want to get on a VMX for more of the, the routing side use cases and routing technologies, or you want to get on a VSRX to, to try kind of mimicking an SRX device. Uh, and I shouldn't say mimicking. I mean, the VSRX is a real product with its own full feature set that, that we use in production and lots of customers do, but but the kind of security side features, right? So those are built in here. You can even try a containerized SRX 
and so on and so on. QFX, you get the idea. So absolutely, these are all the same Junos OS. As you're getting familiar, you, you could get into any of these and, and at a general level, your experience would be entirely the same. And then the features, of course, would branch off as appropriate. Awesome. In addition to that, we have pre-built topologies. So we're not just leaving you with the single devices. Uh, there's a set of items for routing, and I'll just scroll down the page here to get a sense of this. We got some switching topologies, including a data center oriented topology, IP fabric via, via EP, EVP and VXLAN. We've got some security topologies, IPsec NAT, automation, and then uh, a set of our uh, software products, the management and analytics telemetry type things like Contra Enterprise Multi-Cloud or, or HealthBot, even things like uh, Security Director. So a real cross-section of topologies that you can see here, and I'll just scroll back up as we go. And I think Here's for me- we do have a couple questions just around the hardware, actually. Um, you know, people sure. are looking for the EX, and and I know you're always adding things to, to VLAB. So um, I guess we, if you want to comment on that, and then if you could comment on how similar the, the virtual uh, devices are to the actual hardware, that would be great, too. Absolutely. So logical and good questions. Uh, maybe second question first. How do the virtualized Junos products or the virtualized MXS or XQFX products relate to the physical ones? <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, uh, in fact, they're they're very similar is probably the easy answer. So as I mentioned earlier, I mean, the VMX and the VSRX and even the CSRX are, are full products. You can use them as their own virtualized Junos devices. That said, of course, they're, they're very much like the physical MX and the physical SRX. And so the, the kind of more detailed answer is that across these platforms, there can be some fine, fine feature differences. Um, just simply based on the on the fact that these are virtualized platforms versus physical platforms with their own ASICs and the forwarding plane and things of that nature. Broadly speaking, feature sets are the same, largely at parity, but it can happen that there is, is some fine distinction. You can find those distinctions on juniper.net and in our technical documentation, but, but I think for broad use cases, you can expect to jump in here uh, and find the same functionality in each, in each case. Uh, and now I must apologize, I forgot the first question. <laughs> it was around the EX and uh, if that might uh, be yeah. added. Yes, so the EX does not have a virtualized platform uh, for kind of technical logistical reasons that we don't need to worry about. But that said, the VQFX, um, while not a fully productized and sold and supported platform, is nevertheless a virtualized QFX which itself supports a broad range of switching type technologies or EX centric technologies, switching routing, and then of course, EVP and VXLAN, things of that nature. So, so to that point, if when you're thinking of EX, while we don't have an EX here, we did use the VQFXs to make some switching topologies. Uh, we're always adding more, of course, but uh, that's the answer, the EX situation here in VLabs. VQFX will get you in the direction, once again, on a platform by platform basis, then you then need to get a little more careful in particular. Um, and if you're a customer considering purchasing that, then of course you want to engage with your account team to get the fine details sorted out properly. But but from a, an access type perspective, VQFX, a pretty reasonable alternative. In fact, a good alternative to the, the EX type environment. Yeah, excellent. Thanks so much. Um, we have another question. Can I learn how to configure a switch? I think we absolutely can do that. Maybe even you can show us, Karen. Absolutely. So uh, we can pick any topology here. And why don't I just go back to uh, uh, one that I'm going to cheat and already spun up in advance. So each of these are pre-built topologies. So when you see these diagrams, I'll click into this BGP one. When you see the diagram, which I will click in just a moment, but you know, the devices in play, the protocols in use, that, that really does represent that these are the, the real products here and they are pre-built in this kind of a topology. So if I go back here and I click the launch button, it's gonna take me through from these front-end web pages to our back-end lab environment. And as the, di uh, the, the, uh, the mapping comes up here, you can see that the topology diagram doesn't look exactly the same, but in fact, the devices are in the same position. So you can use the diagram with the lab environment to kind of navigate yourself around. Now, can I actually do something with these? Absolutely. This sandbox is not running at the moment. You simply go up to the right corner and hit reserve and you will get some options in terms of, do you want to start it right now? Do you want to schedule it for 
tomorrow at 9 a.m. I want to come in and I want this thing to be running fine. You can pre-schedule it in that kind of way. So, so as you choose, uh, this is also a great time to mention um, for length. By default, these sandboxes run for three hours, but in those setup, the, if you click reserve, those setup details, you can expand up to six hours maximum for, for a single session. So three to six hours, whatever you like. Uh, either way, you would spin it up. It'll take uh, 10 to 15 minutes to come up. And this is the part where I'll cheat across here and move to this sandbox, which is the same sandbox, but already running. So once it's running, it's as simple as Float your mouse over the device you want to get access to. Here's SSH, so let's connect into that. And there it is. I'm on, if I can type it properly, the, a running MX. I can, uh, you know, I can show um, BGP summary in this case because I'm running BGP. I can go into configuration mode. I can make configuration changes. I can add new parameters. I can take parameters off. I can change the protocols. I can I can muck around and uh, add to or break this thing in any way that I want to to serve my needs. So full access, full configurability. Uh, it's it's the real thing. You can jump in and do what you like. Yeah, I know a lot of folks are are interested in learning more about BGP solutions like EVPN, um, really getting comfortable there. Um, and, you know, I remember back in the day, you had to download GNS3 and then figure out how you're going to get all the OSs and the firmware. Um, and so this is just <laughs> a lot easier than that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it helps people with, with that confidence factor. That's absolutely true. I mean, listen, some people like a home lab or, or to down GNS3 style. And, and as you described, totally valid options. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. And you've got full control and can do what you like. But of course, built into that, as, as you're alluding to, right? I need to find a lot of things. I need to download and build a lot of elements. And then, for example, install a VMX on top of that or build a network on top of that. And so we've kind of abstracted away all of those logistical hurdles. And with your account, you log in. And as you just saw me do, spin up a sandbox, log in, and you're, you're off and running. So you're you're using the products and solutions that we offer rather than building the, the, the lab infrastructure to then be able to use them. So Kieran, we have uh, two folks that are wondering if we can use JWeb from the SRX within VLabs. You absolutely can, that's a great question. So uh, let me just switch back here. Sorry, bear with me. I don't have, so, so I don't have an SRX uh, running as a topology. I have a couple, but they're not using SRXs by, by bad luck, I suppose. Uh, but absolutely. So in the menu options, maybe I can fake it a little here. So this is a, a data center sandbox. It's an IP fabric running EVPN VXLAN. And uh, if I switch back to my diagrams, it is this guy here, and I won't crack open too much detail here, but my point being this IP fabric, which is VQFX oriented devices, also includes another product, which is uh, our telemetry and management product, uh, great for DC environments, HealthBot. Now HealthBot is a graphical tool. And my point for all of this is to show you that sure there's an SSH option to get onto this server, but there are several other options. and. VLabs has a user guide and FAQs and how-to videos, by the way, to, to show you these kinds of access details, these fine details for how do I open a UI versus a, a, a CLI console kind of thing. But my point being, there is a graphical option and there would be on an SRX device and it will pop open the UI for the thing you want to get into. So whether it's JWeb or Contrail Enterprise Multicloud has its UI, HealthBot Security Director, has its UI and so on and so on. So it's thinking about it here for a moment, but uh, but indeed the uh, there it comes. The uh, the graphical options are available. VSRX has the JWeb, so you can jump in there. Uh, and again, see the user guide for the details on how to get access and how to get that uh, not turned on, but how how to get yourself in there. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, and and. Fairly seamless. I mean, even if it takes a few seconds, I think that's fantastic. Um, we do have a couple other questions How about virtual chassis or uh, VCF. Kieran, what are sure. your thoughts around those in VLabs? Well, I'm a fan of virtual chassis in general or VCF, but but they are not uh, available here because that uh, the uh, uh, what's the best way to say this? The lab infrastructure itself has some limitations for the way devices are interconnected um, once you get into kind of nested or stacked virtualization. And so uh, virtual chassis are not an option that's available here, unfortunately. Um, so, so not a choice in this case. So Karen, let me ask you, um, we, we do have a user saying that when using some keyboard shortcuts, you have to be careful. Um, he uses uh, Control-W uh, extensively and that can close the tab. But I'm wondering, <laughs> 
if you can, if you putty in directly from your own, you know, putty, um, will that kind of change things or am I just going down the wrong path here? No, no, you're, that's a very astute observation from the user. And so you're, you're going in a good direction there. So indeed, if you know the CLI fairly well uh, and you want to, if again, if I can type this properly, uh, you know, whatever it is, if I want to clear that tab, uh, I might do a control U to control to clear the line. But if I want to do a control W, because I'm in a browser, that's also a keyboard stroke to close the tab, which so makes the point, right? That's and I've done that a fair bit as well, so uh, I know the, the the hassle that that can be. First of all, you can reopen your tab, of course, if that suits you. But uh, but as a regular user, if you truly want to maximize the way you interact with a CLI device, or sorry, the CLI for the devices, and and you're used to your own tools and all those kind of control shortcuts and and um, Putty's a great example. Secure CRT, right, where you can have almost tabs in Secure CRT to have all of your uh, devices open at a time and a common window at the bottom where you can type a command and have it apply to all the boxes at once, all those kind of capabilities. So a big yes to all of that. So I'm using the easy option, uh, you know, spin the wheel here, choose SSH, and, and I get into a tab. That's the easy option, but there is a way, um, and once again, the user guide shows you how to do this. Through just a couple of steps, you can enable the more advanced uh, CLI option as we're describing. And what you're basically doing is opening up a, kind of a punching a hole in the firewall for your sandbox to let your own machine where you're working access that sandbox directly. We call it direct access. And so with that opened or that enabled, then all of a sudden your local tools like Putty or Secure CRT, you can get direct access into your lab devices. And all of a sudden you've got local tool access to your to all the devices in your sandbox. So a great second option for more advanced usage, copy pasting configs, things like that. So, so there's your answer. Again, check the user guide to get uh, the steps sorted out for that. Yeah, I like that. Making it even more real world and and uh, making it easier for folks who are, uh, yeah. you know, you don't want the the tab to close when you're inspired and and CLIing away. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and and two options, and it, and they both serve as equal opposites, right? If I'm a new user and I just want to get on the CLI, I, I don't need a lot of stuff. The tab the tabbed browser here works terrifically well, and it's it's perfectly adequate. If you're a power user or you really want to do some serious work in your lab. Your own tools are a great option, and, and that gets you there. Yeah, awesome. So, Kieran, I know there are never any issues within VLabs, but we do have someone wondering if there are issues um, or, you know, people want to ask for new features or things like that. Uh, where can they go to report this? Oh, nice question. So uh, the kind of alias that you can hit for for ongoing items like you're describing, either an issue uh, or, or we welcome, uh, you know, suggestions for new sandboxes to build or kind of feature tweaks or enhancements. Uh, uh, you can send to vlabs at juniper.net. Super easy. vlabs at juniper.net. In fact, I will show you an example of a recent feature enhancement, if I can say that, that we got recently. This sandbox, the one we just were looking at, see the dotted line there? It didn't exist before. And so someone emailed us and asked if we could add the second link so that they could kind of continue to manipulate the sandbox and, and try out uh, different BGP um, priority settings, meds and, uh, and metrics and things like that. So um, preference and, and things of that nature. So we simply added the link. It was easy to do. They're not always easy to add. If there's a lot of work, we have to put it in our queue, of course, but uh, but totally welcome and, and open to those kinds of things at, again, vlabs at juniper.net. Yeah, that seems uh, pretty easy. It does seem like you are always adding new features and uh, new labs and things like that. Does it happen pretty often? I mean, I, I just want to make the point basically that this is not something that is just dead in the water now, right? Nope, we're, that's a great point. So we're always adding, we're probably adding, first of all, that we don't, uh, we're not on a, on a fixed exact cadence, but probably a good answer is a couple, two, three topologies a month is generally the cadence that we've been running at for the last while. And it is a going concern. We are actively adding more. So if you, you know, jump in today and you jump in a month or three or six months from now, you will see more things. There's no question about it. So always adding, always expanding, be it expanding into new topologies for existing, uh, you know, more security topologies, reusing VMX or VSRX, that'll probably happen. And likewise, new products as they come along. So uh, if we've got a new product that just releases in, in the new year, for example, we would aim to get a topology for that. So you get the idea, always expanding in all directions possible and uh, trying to keep on the front edge of things here. 
Excellent, Kieran. Well, um, first of all, I'm going to see if there are any other questions from folks watching. Feel free to put those in the chat. Um, and Kieran, as we kind of wrap it up, is there anything else you'd like to show folks? I think that's a pretty good cross section. We ran through the labs, uh, like I said, lots of things. Jump in here, uh, get your account, log in, wander through the catalog, click into these diagrams uh, to get the more detailed pages like we saw earlier with this example. Launch into the labs. Uh, the lab environment, uh, reserve, hit that reserve button to spin up and set your time frame and starting now or pre-reserve for a future time. Uh, we talked about access, um, all kinds of great stuff. And maybe the last thing is as a reminder back on this landing page is the top right corner, resources, how-to videos, user guide, FAQ, those will get you into kind of some of the finer details as you really start to use the platform. Like and a great example was the one we said earlier, right? That, that direct access for my local CLI tools, all those kinds of things built into the, uh, the resources there. So be sure to check those out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kieran. Um, and Sheeta, will you please show us the registration page? Folks, if you would just take a moment to f fill out a quick form, um, then you can qualify for a Starbucks gift card. So we'd love to get you some coffee, get some caffeine in your in your blood <laughs> um, while you do V labs and, and, you know, stay up late, CLIing away and all of that good stuff. Um, otherwise, you know, check out V labs, check out our webinars. Um, and please, you know, Give us any questions or feedback. We'd love to hear it. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And thank Absolutely. you, Kieran. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you.